<laughs> and, and so so okay. I'm sitting there thinking, now, wait a minute. I mean, would you go back into trusting the government? No, I no, don't know. No, I, no. I really differ with Andrew on that. Yeah, and at the point that the world won't exist that way, at the point that... The, you really so think it would be detrimental? $600 silver, $600 silver is not a good thing for global social stability. It wouldn't be good for anybody. No, because it implies a world in which we've got rampaging hyperinflation on food and energy, um, and uh, basic uh, collapse of the infrastructure totally, maybe 60 to 70 percent unemployment. Right. You know, and it gets worse from there, closing uh, food supplies, uh, you know, riots over food, the social order is disrupted. It implies a very chaotic time that very few people will wish to be in, and any who survive will say, boy, I'm glad I came through that, and I'm never going mm. back. Because if people listening right now, they say, well, gosh, I hope we get $600 silver. I have, you know, 10,000 ounces in my basement. But then what would you do? But you do? won't have Safeway stores. You won't have Walmart, Yeah, what would you do you know? with it? Exactly. What would, what would you exactly. do with it? Yeah. I guess is that an argument then to have silver maybe in that junk silver that could actually like dimes and quarters that could actually be traded? Clearly? Yeah, there, that is an argument for that. It's uh -huh. also an argument for being um, for spreading your preparations across to multiple different kinds of uh, material goods and not just assuming you'll be able to purchase what you want. Oh, in other words, have the whole spectrum of the food and the, the water, the whole the whole thing. So you really think we're, we're all of us listening today? We're going to experience this kind of um, social appeal, kind of like kind of Mad Max kind of idea. I well, because I don't if you like think to use of that it, term, it won't, it won't show up that way, and and I don't like that uh, idea of a apocalyptic version. Yeah, that's kind of weird. But but we are indeed going to go through social disruption like no one has ever seen before, simply because of the amount of people on the planet, the current level of the state of communications at the rate at which uh, the awakening is occurring, and the number of centuries of control. I suspect that we'll see the collapse of the Catholic Church and the destruction of most major religions. I suspect that the, um, the Islamic religion is going to go through an upheaval and a reformation period that's been long held uh, off by the Saudis and others that will just shake that part of the planet. And in the meantime, perhaps as much as half of the planetary populace will die as a result of the climate change over these next couple of years. Wow, that's pretty... But also, look what happens. I mean, instantly that the dollar collapses, two and a half million people in the United States die because they won't be able to afford health care. Within the next month or so, that, that process begins with the, with the dollar being devaluated, uh, devalued by about 30%. You reach a particular threshold, and all of a sudden, you know, people will put off medicines even further, put themselves at risk, et cetera, et cetera. We're seeing it creep up. It, it won't be a specific single day where all of a sudden two and a half people, uh, two and a half billion, uh, mm. two and a half million people mm. die. But we'll be able to say, okay, in hindsight, on this day, the dollar reached this level, and a year later, we know that this occurred. Well, in my limited experience this lifetime with uh, challenging situations, Cliff, I can remember in the late 90s where there was a hurricane coming through New Orleans, and I was uh, working for a radio station down there, and it was supposedly going to be a big one, and I could not believe that there was nothing, nothing in the grocery stores. <laughs> it's I mean, scary, I, I couldn't, you know, I, I never, you know, it's like a bad movie. You walk right. in there like the, the Wind Dixies down there, and, and I mean, you know, there was a couple of ding-dongs, maybe. That was it. Right. I mean, just really weird, man. It was like, whoa. But we live in a just-in-time society, yeah. you know, three days on the shelf if we're lucky, and all it takes is the change of the mind of the herd, and big things can happen very you, quickly. You probably know this. Uh, I was in the food business for a while, and I was in a lot of stores, and the people think they have these big uh, warehouses uh, in the back of the store. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't they don't, exist. They don't. <laughs> no, they it's don't a place for a truck exist. to pull up. Your truck pulls up, and they put it out, and they put it on the shelf. Yeah. I mean, that's how it's done these days. Yeah. Uh, as you know, if <laughs> there's not, you know, if something weird gets predicted, you know, you cannot go, you're not going to count on going to the food store to buy anything. And see, that goes all the way up to the whole idea of the $600 silver. At that point, the cost of oil is such that we don't have cheap China March anymore to supply uh -huh. us with all of the goods. Mm -hmm. And we're, we, at that point, actually, we have a whole new class of individuals working in the United States that are going to be ripping open up landfills looking for solid items that have been thrown away in the past few generations. Hug. Do you yeah. think at that point, Cliff, that there would be any value to... Any kind of paper, oil futures? Uh, no, no. You, you, what, do you, what do you think? They, they would just default on all those things? 
Uh, I don't think it'll be meaningful. Even if they didn't default, uh, they would pay you off in what? Paper dollars, and no one will be accepting them. So you really truly uh, Well, look, in the 1930s, it, you, people need to read history. In the 1930s, the United States was not that primitive of a country. Right. Okay, we were just about to go into World War II, which boosted us uh, technologically, but still, we were not that primitive. Yet, during that depression, it got so bad that there were counties in Ohio and Iowa. A whole county could not muster change for a five dollar gold piece well wasn't that though because they literally stopped printing money they just turned the spigot off intentionally no that was not the case the they in fact had attempted mm. to create inflation by the seizing of of all different they attempted to create inflation anywhere they could because deflation is a killer to the federal reserve and so they actually bought up with with deflationary deflationary dollars they were buying up uh, herds of animals and killing them off, trying to create uh, higher prices in anything. That's why they eventually went to the seizing of gold. No, I understand that, but there there was literally a shortage of money, though. I'm sure of that. No, okay, you're you're correct that there was a distribution issue, but it was more of demand than anything. Because bear in mind, they were still dealing in a fractional reserve banking. But system. they weren't creating dollars like they do today to throw at the problem. They had a different mechanism for creating dollars. They didn't have digi dollars, so it actually was a cost of production issue. But okay. they still, they still did did have vast quantities of dollars. That was not, never a problem. The amount of of uh, a green colored cotton cloth that we call the dollars was never an issue. It was the demand structure that allowed it to get out and settle down to people. Right. There, were, there was actually no body that that wanted them because there wasn't work to so to pay somebody. Correct. And yeah. the minute you took that dollar, you owed the five cents in interest on it because of the fractional reserve system. Right. Debt was an, was an anathema. Now, the word anathema comes from the Catholic religion, and it means that for which you would be excommunicated. Hmm. So you wouldn't want to touch the dollars, and it, they didn't, didn't want to deal with them because of the debt issue. So how is it going to be different now when we've got 18 trillion of these digi dollars out there? That'll go fairly quick. The, the, mm -hmm. We'll have a cascading cross default or cascading system collapse within the um, uh, the electrical system that will cause a lot of these digi dollars to be unreachable or, or immaterial in the sense that they disappeared. Uh, so, for instance, imagine a situation where because we generate electricity through coal and oil in the Coal is dependent upon oil being there to move it by train, and if the Israelis attacked and all of a sudden oil went to $800 a barrel or $2,000 a barrel right. or $20,000 a barrel, Whatever. then the cost of electricity becomes so prohibitively high that we'll indeed have shortages, chaos, and electrical collapses in the, in the infrastructure. So the fact that you've got $5 million in your Bank of America account is is moot to you because no ATM is functioning in your area and you don't have the oil to get to an ATM five states away that may be functioning and might be able to tap into Bank of America and you're not even sure that they're going to allow you to do that because they know the electric, electric system is down in this vast region and therefore they're going to uh, shutter everybody's accounts until it all becomes straightened. And so they won't be a banking holiday per se, but it might be a national electrical grid failure that in essence does the same thing because we're on the same path that occurred in the 30s, just rhyming with it, not exactly duplicating it. So in your mind, then, the, the powers that be that control money and everything today, that the wild cards that they do not think about is... Earth oh, they're basically stupid. Earth, yeah. earth changes and all the other stuff that's going on. That they and, don't and their own, their, the side effects of their own, own actions. Uh, they, are, they are... These people... The, because of the, I mean, we can get into whether or not they're reptiles and all of sure, that. It sure, doesn't sure. matter. But the, the, they don't understand. <laughs> they the certainly act like reptiles, right? And they're always in reptilian mind because they're not aware of the greater psychology of what's going on. So they're uh -huh. not even prepared for the side effects of their own actions. And they, they're failing now. And it's inevitable that they will fail. And there's going to just be this huge aha moment at some point for vast quantities of the people in the planet. And then we're going to see some real huge change. You know, you I know that's that stupid. Well, yeah. Who, yeah. the powers that be? Yeah, or the, yeah the powers the, that be. Powers that be. Uh, yes, they are, in fact, uh, they're clever, but they're not particularly smart because mm -hmm. they always live in rep reptile mind and they can't get themselves out of it and they can't conceive of, 
of it uh, of anything outside of themselves. So imagine a situation where you have a highly advanced space alien race come zipping over here to Earth, sees what's going on, and, mm-hmm. and they can dominate us technologically, mm-hmm. but they're puzzled by us because that race that it got here is not self-examining. They don't even have the idea of psychology or, or meditation. So the old Ike idea that they're not really spiritual beings, they're just like, they're just drones or whatever. No, not drones. Oh, I mean, but not, like, not a good word, but reptiles is what you know. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. might as well use that because of the reptilian brain. They're sure, trapped sure. in ritual. They can't think outside Pain of the pleasure soul. thing, huh? Yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. And they, they don't have a higher thought. They're in, enamored of us because of our ability to reach spiritual states in which we will do tremendous things, including self-sacrifice. No reptile will ever so, uh, be in a, <laughs> caught in a self-sacrificing situation. It's just uh, not part of their makeup. You know, they will cause the others to die rather than uh, accept a self-sacrificing situation that you might see. So they do not understand the Hadrian at the gate um, uh, model of human behavior, and it freaks them out. And, um, and then they just sort of ignore it and go on about their business. Well, unfortunately, they've kind of ignored it, and it's all piling up, and it's now going to come crashing around their ears. And I think, indeed, there's going to be an awakening but it won't be this um, uh, rapturous ascension, you know, bird singing mm-hmm. and all of that. It's going to be the biggest chaotic uh, mass that anybody can imagine, probably followed by a couple of centuries worth of partying once all the reptiles are gone. And we, and we straighten things out if we manage to get through these next few years because we've got the sun doing weird stuff on us. Well, the sun do, is doing – do you, do you uh, think about why Cliff High is here now and – why you've incarnated at this point? And sure, sure, all the time. Yeah. It drives me crazy, but there's no definitive answer, so I try and keep busy and do real work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean, you know, you, you, but, but, do, you, do you think you're doing your Dharma Karma kind of thing, though? I mean, Oh, I know that's the case because I've learned to take the feedback from universe, and when I stray away from that, universe slaps me upside the head, and I yeah. say, ow, and I don't do that anymore. So, yeah, yeah yes, I do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I resent it terribly because <laughs> it keeps me away from being out on the boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Cliff Hyatt is always uh, just such a gas to talk to you. We covered a lot of territory here. Now, tell folks uh, how they can get your your latest issue. Uh, you can buy all of that on half page, halfpasthuman.com if you view a mind too, but you're probably better off just ignoring it and going about <laughs> in your own exploration of reality. Well, you know, it's really funny because there's lots of times I only read part of mine because I think, gosh, well, you know, I'm just going to prepare for the worst and hope for the best anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I mean, what are all these details are going to do for me? But this whole tipping point thing, November, I mean, see, I didn't even read all that, man. And that's that's uh, that's a biggie. Yeah, I think we need to pay attention to that. But you know, just so that we'll be aware and not surprised, and we can examine it and you know, and glory in it, so to speak, whatever the hell it is. But one on a ten, if ten is your most confident, are you way up there that oh, something is... really big is going to be happening November eight on? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a nine or a ten in terms of confidence. So I've got everything Man. everything in there the same way as I had for nine eleven, and and I was eighty five really? days early on that, and didn't really have a clue, but I knew something that we had a tipping point, and life would be different thereafter. And I've got the same data again. You got the whole farm on Black Thirty, huh? Man, I was, yeah. let's go yeah. for it. All right, my friend. Thanks so much for uh, hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Cool. The rain stopped here. Hope yeah, the rain there. stopped here for a while. Okay. Thanks, Cliff. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Cliff High. See, I am so brain dead. I didn't even didn't even know about the whole November thing. Well, as we'll say, we'll see. 